Well, first quarter results are from Harmony Gold Mining this morning show a 6% rise in total gold production for the three months to September. And the group says it's on track to meet its annual production target. At the same time, though, it faces an 11% rise in cash operating costs, and that put pressure on the bottom line. Here to tell us more is Graham Briggs. He's the CEO of Harmony. Graham, thanks for coming in this afternoon. Hi, Stephen. Well, um, Graham, it looks like even the best plans could be set astray by forces outside of your control. So although you're on track with those production targets, you do have some headwinds at the moment, and most notably rising costs because of ESCOM and the, the, the stronger RAND. Yeah, Stephen, we have a few headwinds, but I mean, that's our job is to uh, try and benefit from the assets that we have, the cards we've been dealt. And, uh, and to look at these things quarterly is often very difficult. We've got some long-term plans. We've been talking about them for many, many moons now. And, uh, you know, we're getting the production that we've said that we're going to get. So we've just seen the, the start-up of, of ramp-up of production from new projects. Uh, the capital's coming down. Uh, it was quite stiff this quarter. But it comes down by about 100 million every quarter for the next three quarters. So, um, you know, there are headwinds, sure. Uh, there is the RAND, the RAND strength. Um, you know, it's a fairly short-term uh, effect that we believe. Um, you know, the gold price is doing well. Uh, there have been wage increases and so on. But, but all in all, you know, the company is doing very well. How do you manage those headwinds, though? Do you think you can really just take them away but with, with higher production coming from, from those mines? Well, you can't take all of them away. I mean, the you know electricity increases affect us a lot. Uh, we do use a lot of electricity, um, so those do affect us. But we have to try and save, and we have to try and do the things and be more efficient and more productive. You know, that's our challenge. How are you factoring in those ESCOM tariff increases that they've proposed a 45% a year for the next three years going forward? It's, it's very difficult, Stephen. Those 45, I mean, it is a proposal for a start. So we don't start factoring in just on proposals. We certainly look at it and, and try and understand the effects. Uh, the real issue there is we can factor in 45% increase on our electricity cost, but that's not the only cost. You know, the cost is going to fuel inflation. It's going to fuel the cost of so steel. secondary effects as well. All those effects, the businesses around us. Mm -hmm. and, and once you start factoring that, including labor costs, of course, you know, inflation will increase by 2% more than it should have. Um, and the labor costs, you know, there's going to be pressure on the consumer. Everyone's going to have high electricity. So, you know, it's the whole circular argument. Um, that is going to be very damaging to the country if it's implemented. Well, I mean, you talk in the commentary today of perhaps having to restructure some of the, 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 the lowest grade, highest cost operations. I mean, could this lead to shaft closures? Oh, certainly. If those increases come through, it will lead to shaft closures. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, what I was referring to today is, is not related to uh, future electricity costs. I mean, one must distinguish between that. The, the, what I was referring to today is there's a few of our operations where really the ore body is depleted. There is very little ore body left. It's very low grade. And they're near the ends of their lives. And we'd always planned, we've been telling people about the planned closures of some operations. Uh, so there's, one mustn't confuse those two issues. Does the new production coming on stream make up for those depleted ore bodies? More than makes up. More than makes up. If you look at our production going from last year 1.46 million ounces into the 2.2, you know, that's a massive increase. That's the size of a mid cap uh, gold company that we're actually going to increase over the three year period. No, it more than makes up. We're going to have. You know, some of the best mines in South Africa, uh, very productive new mines in South Africa. That's what we're going to end up with. One, one of the crit criticisms that some analysts might have of Harmony is you are too dependent on South Africa. So you really are at the vagaries of the, of the RAND Absolutely. and of ESCOM prices. But I mean, there's, there's not very much you can do about that at this stage, is there? Yeah, th those are some of the cards we've got. Uh, we obviously have got uh, a lot of ambitions in Papua New Guinea. We're doing a lot of exploration in Papua New Guinea. So we have got ambitions, uh, but you know, it's still, uh, in South Africa, it's still a good country to invest in gold mining. You know, you can invest capital here. It's actually cheaper to get, uh, you know, get a mine going here than uh, offshore. Um, but unfortunately, the cost issues and all the, all the changes in the country are, you know, are a factor and people have to, you know, factor them into your sort of future plans. How about the President's staying gold mine? When will that be coming, uh, will be, become yours and when will you be able to merge that with your existing free state operations? Yeah, we're working through all the conditions, President. Uh, the DMR has done very well. Uh, we've got the license uh, and so that's done very well. But there are a few more uh, license issues to go, uh, conditions, President. Um, hopefully within of three months or so, we'll be able to, you know, let the world know exactly what our plans are there. 
Uh, we've got a team working on site. Uh, they're going through the plans, uh, trying to understand everything, doing the production scenarios and the like. So hopefully uh, in about three months' time... We'll Would you expect many synergies and cost savings from that? Absolutely, yes. No, it's going to be a huge amount. Uh, you know, those operations will be incorporated into our operations very easily. We've got the plant capacity, we've got the tailings, disposal capacity, uh, and we've got people that can do it. I mean, our people know how to operate those sort of assets. We know the ore bodies, it's going to be a good fit. Graham, um, we saw a nice rise in the dollar gold price o over the quarter. Of course, yeah. the Rand gold price was down by about 3% over the same yeah. period. Um, the, the dollar gold price, of course, has since gone to $1,070, which must be quite beneficial for you. Where do you see the gold price going forward? What do you think would support it above $1,000 an ounce? We unashamedly gold bulls, Stephen. So, you know, we, so. we, we are gold bulls. And uh, what you see in the world is you see production going down. Uh, not, so not only a South African phenomenon, it's a worldwide production. If you scan through the latest quarterly results from all the companies that have uh, presented so far, I think there are two companies that have got an increase in gold production. All the others are either static or down. And, uh, and that's quite alarming for sort of, so the fundamentals for gold are actually good. Uh, exploration successes, they're not huge exploration successes. So um, it's becoming more and more difficult to bring a gold mine onto production. And uh, so we, the fundamentals are still good. And uh, you know, one just has to add all the financial issues of the world and so on, and you see a rising gold price. I'm, I'm positive that it's going to you know, rise. And with gold just above $1,000 an ounce, where would you like to see the rand? Where would you be comfortable with the rand with gold at current levels? I think it's sort of seven and a half, uh, you know, to, to eight. You can probably live with that. Eight, eight would be a, a good figure. You know, if we get 7.7 um, .7 .7 or so this quarter, I think that'll be good. That'll be sort of 260,000 rand a kilogram. That'll be great.